Each year, USGS scientists systematically assess the ecological health and water quality conditions in streams and rivers across the United States. This research plays a vital role in land management and natural resource decisions around the country. Contrary to popular belief, these extensive data collection efforts completed by researchers in the USGS National Water Quality Assessment Program involve much more than just water quality. Back uh, when the NOC program first started, the National Water Quality Assessment Program, they recognized the need to incorporate biology into the, the sampling. And so we look at the algae uh, that, that's in the different streams and rivers and the, the bugs that eat the algae and then also the fish that rely upon the bugs as a food source. Uh, we also look at the habitat and the water quality to see how all these different groups of organisms uh, respond to things like nutrients, pesticides, temperature, and, and other uh, stressors. What we've done is we've, we've developed these methods that seem to work well across the nation and so that we have standard methods, standard protocols and so that way when we do the sampling here we can uh, and the same methods are used back in you know the East Coast or in the Midwest or whatever that we we've sampled everything in the same way and so we can compare and, and, and combine the data sets and actually assess things nationally or regionally. Well the program in general is is looking um, at watersheds across the nation uh, in, in pretty pretty large uh, river basins and that has provided you know, hundreds and hundreds of sampling locations in areas of urbanization, uh, agricultural land uses, but also in, in settings like this forested um, ecosystems that haven't been as, as impacted by anthropogenic uh, you know, activities. One of the things that's really important in, 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 in what we call biological assessments of streams, so how do we, can we understand the conditions of streams and, and, and make a comparison between one stream and the next, is you have to know what is your reference or minimally impacted condition. If you don't know what your benchmark is, you can't then say when are things impacted or impaired or, how, or when are things changing uh, with climate change or with land use changes. You need to know your benchmark. All the different ecological data, the algae, the macro um, vertebrates, the fish, they give us different indications of what's happening. So what we, one of the things we're realizing is that it's important to study more than one type of, of biological organisms in the stream because each one can give you a slightly different signal. The other thing is it really gives us this indication of is, you know, uh, when, uh, land use effects, or when we look at the effects of agricultural land use in streams, that we see that the biological is a really good uh, re response indicator of, of, of impacts due to water quality or habitat changes or sedimentation, things like that. When we start to see impacts from, from things like water pollution on, on the biota, you know, we, we see that in a variety of different um, uh, in indicator species. A lot of times we'll see the diversity decline. You know, instead of having a food web where nutrients and, and light energy combine to, to produce a real productive stream that you know, we tend to, to see as, as, as having you know, a healthy trout population, at least in these mountainous streams in the West, um, you know, what, what you find is, is that you don't see very many trout and the benthic invertebrate population is greatly simplified. You don't see a lot of mayflies and stoneflies and other types of food for the fish. And so, you know, that can ultimately be traced back to the water pollution. Water quality is important to sample, but what, one of the problems is it's expensive 
and that it is only a one-time sample. It only grabs the water and gives you assessment of what's happening at that one time. Where the biology, they live there all year long. So what you find when you're sampling it, they've been living and been exposed to all the conditions that have happened all year long. And that's why the biology is a really good indicator of the whole system. A lot of the, the management policy decisions that are set are, um, are driven by biocriteria. And so we look at the health of the biological communities, really the, the full assemblage of the fish, the bugs, and the algae, to, to get a, a really a full assessment of, of what the biota look like. But then we also collect samples and, and analyze water samples for nutrients and pesticides. You know, through the monitoring that we do and these interdisciplinary studies and multidisciplinary approaches and we use uh, all kinds of different modeling and multivariate statistics to tease all this stuff apart. But you know, ultimately um, it's hoped that the information that we generate can be used by management agencies that dictate things like nutrient levels that are um, permitted in streams and um, you know, controlling runoff and erosion and all those sorts of processes. Um, and really, without this kind of information, um, where do you really even begin? It's velocity, 1.8 feet per second. To find out more about NACWA sampling efforts in your area, or to learn more about how the USGS monitors the ecological health of rivers in the United States, please visit the USGS online. Historical data from Oregon, as well as the rest of the country, can be found at our National Water Information System or at our BioData websites. This has been a video production of the Oregon Science Podcast, U.S. Geological Survey, Department of the Interior.